You're listening to the Sketchnote Army Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Rohde, the author of the Sketchnote Handbook and the Sketchnote Workbook. And this is the podcast where I chat with sketchnoters and visual thinkers and try to understand what makes them tick. Hey, are you looking for the ideal sketchbook for your sketchnoting practice? The Sketchnote Idea Book is the sketchbook designed for sketchnoters. Equipped with no bleed, no show through paper, you can take almost any marker or pen you can throw at it. Get 10% off with code ARMY at airship.store. Hey everyone, it's Mike Rohde and I am here with my friend, Maoshi Amwaku. How are you doing, Maoshi? I'm doing good, Mike. It's so good to have you. I'm doing great. It's... um, it's always great for me to have someone interesting on the show to talk about their visual thinking journey and the work they do and the impact they're having. And I feel like you're someone who definitely is doing that and uh, love to share those stories. I think that's the, the core reason why the podcast exists is to just reveal really interesting people all around the world doing great things in the visual thinking space. So with that, why don't you tell us, give us an introduction, who you are and uh, what you do. Okay. My name is Maoshi Amwaku, and I'm originally from Ghana and mm-hmm. um, grew up in Northern Ireland, hence my accent. Mm-hmm. Um, and I work in education, uh, supporting learners with additional learning needs. And I love it. Mm-hmm. And I, as I understand our, in our chats that led up to having you on the show, you've pretty recently discovered sketchnoting. I would love to hear... Uh, your origin story around that how did where did that come from and maybe look back when you were a little girl like have you been drawing since you were a little girl and how did those two worlds and your your teaching kind of all overlap into where you are today okay I think I'll start by telling you a little bit about me growing up um I've always loved drawing I when I was younger I wanted to be an artist and um I love hand lettering and like and I love making zines. Mm. So um, so I stumbled across sketch notes in 2020 and it really transformed my learning experience. So mm. although I work in education, I had to do a course as part of my job role um, to help me support my learners with learning needs. And I was finding the course particularly difficult um, because when I went, when I would read the note, read my textbook and make notes, when it came to writing the assignments, I would just forget everything. And I was so frustrated, like my, I started to fall behind with my assignments, which I thought, this is ironic, because what I do, I support learners um, to get their assignments done. Here I am, I can't even do my own. Mm. So um, I didn't really, I didn't want to tell anyone that I was struggling so I just kind of had an idea I thought to myself if this was one of my students what would I say Mm. like I would encourage them like to keep going but I would encourage them to find another way so one day I just thought right I'm just going to google it so I I was so behind with my work I really didn't have time to be doing this but I thought I'm going to have to try and and find some answers. So yeah, I went on the internet and I researched and I came up with um, mnemonics, memory palace, mind maps, and finally sketch notes. And Mm. that changed everything. So um, for me, um, the first sketch note I made was of a TED talk because I just wanted, I bought your book and I wanted to find out like, I straight away, does this thing work? Should I continue with it or not? Because I need to know that I'm investing my time wisely. And I sketch noted, I think it was called the greatest uh, TED TED talk ever told. I think that's the name of it. <laughs> okay. and it was like 20 minutes long. And I was like, I, I don't even know if I still have the sketch note, but I remember the video. And I sketch noted that and I thought, oh, wow. And then I, when I read my textbook there were certain topics that I was really struggling with so I decided I'm going to sketch note this but I set myself boundaries of because I used to write pages and pages 
pages of notes and never read it. Even though I did like, I use like different colored pens, etc. I thought, okay, I'm going to limit myself to an A4 sheet of paper per mm -hmm. topic. I went to the glossary in the, you, when you talk about um, creating an icon library, I thought, okay, so for each topic, I'll look at the glossary and write down what those keywords are to create my icon library. And then I'll read a chapter and then I will sketch note it and that's it. And I did that for each of the chapters, particularly the ones I was struggling with. And then I used those notes to write my assignments. And I have to say, before I started doing that, I just thought, why am I not remembering this information? Mm. Why am I, am I not understanding this? But then when I sketch noted it, I was so encouraged because I realized I do know it, I do understand it, and I can do it. So it really helped me with my confidence. And I did the work. And I have to say, I was really behind with my work, but I did it. I got it done. I mm. got my assignments in on time. And I remember thinking, you know, I actually do love learning, but that experience was so negative for me that I thought, now I kind of understand how some of our students feel when they can't understand a piece of work because it does knock your confidence. Mm -hmm. It does make you feel stressed. It does make you feel isolated. That, you know, for me, I was too embarrassed to tell anyone because that was actually my job was to help other people and I couldn't help myself. So when I got to the end of the course, what I couldn't understand was I, the course was now finished, but I wanted to keep learning because it was just so addictive, like to do the sketch notes. It was such a fun activity to do. So like it, it was like the summertime. So I kept learning. I kept researching um, effective ways to learn and reading different books that inspired me. One of them was Moonwalking with Einstein mm -hmm. by Josh For Forer, I think is how you pronounce his name. Mm -hmm. He talks about using the memory palace right. as a way to remember information. I was just fascinated. I was hooked. And then I thought, oh my goodness, I wouldn't mind doing another course from not wanting to do the course that I did. I wanted to keep learning. And then I thought, well, I started looking for opportunities, any opportunity to sketch note. At that point, I hadn't shared my work with anyone. It was just for myself. Um, but so towards the end of 2021, no, end of 2020, 2021, my New Year's resolution, I kept it pretty open and creative, was to invest in myself. And that would primarily be learning a new skill um, and also trying things that I probably wouldn't normally try because I would be afraid to do it. One of them was actually public speaking. Mm. Um, you know, do a workshop for, for my colleagues because I am a shy person. I'm, I'm an introvert. And the idea of speaking in front of any group of people scares me. So that January... <laughs> Like that whole year, actually, I started thinking, what if, what if, and starting to do different things in sharing my work. Um, and that, in terms of the sketch notes, I didn't actually use it at work initially. I tried to fight the urge to sketch note. I really wanted to do it, mm. but I was kind of worried what people would think, like, because my background is art. Actually, it's fashion design. Mm -hmm. um, everyone knows that I love to draw, but I thought that if I drew at work, maybe people would think that I wasn't taking my job seriously or like, mm -hmm. why is she doodling? Why are you doing that? Um, but one time in a class, I was supporting a group of students and um, nearly all of the students in the class had a learning need and I used to find it really difficult to support the group because they're you know the needs vary a lot I remember uh, observing one student in particular who um, who really struggled to understand what he needed to do and like in in the class the students would rely on me to take notes and I remember thinking well my handwriting's not great 
And if they don't understand the notes, probably my handwriting, but I, I kind of thought I'd like the students to read the notes, use them, understand them and become more independent. So I thought if I sketch note this, it was partly because I was struggling to write down the traditional way, but I thought if I sketch note this, maybe um, they'll be so curious, they'll want to read it. I really wanted them mm -hmm. to want to read it and use it. So I started to do it and I shared that with the teacher because because I was supporting the students in the class, I wasn't mm -hmm. the teacher. Mm -hmm. um, I shared what I wanted to do with the teacher. And I, I told them that this is a new thing that I'm learning. I would like to get better at it. Um, perhaps could I do it in this class? Because I feel that the more I do it, the better I get. And if I do it every single day, I'm definitely going to improve. So he was really supportive and I started to use it. At first, the students didn't really know what to make of it they're like Moshi you're drawing oh my goodness like what is this <laughs> is this serious and I thought oh dear I have to tell them this is this is really important you're supposed to use this so I give them a little speech I said you know yes it took a lot of effort but I'm doing this because I want you to do well I oh, I really want you to enjoy your learning but I want you to use the notes understand it use it but not to rely on me to learn that you can do these things for yourself as well. And so I did it. And then the next day I was like, oh, I might have to reinforce that. I started to do my little speech and I said, Moshi, we know you told us yesterday. <laughs> so I never mentioned it again. And so I kept doing it. Um, it was during the pandemic. So we were in our bubbles. So that meant a, a unique, unique opportunity. I got to stay with my students in the various classes that they were in. And I continued to sketch note in each of those classes. They got used to it. I didn't have to say anything. And what happened was the teacher would deliver the lesson and I would have a clipboard, sketch note the lesson, scan it and share. We use Microsoft Teams. I would share it on Teams and all the students would have access to those notes. And um, one of the unexpected dividends, I guess, of doing that was it meant that students who have learning needs could use it, but everybody could use it, whether they have a learning need or not. Um, and if someone misses a lesson, they have those notes to help them to catch up. It was tiring and a part of me wondered why I even started because uh, I didn't actually have an end plan for when I would stop doing this. So I would ask the teacher, would you like me to stop now? I kind of secretly hoping he would say, it's okay, Moshe, you can stop. And he's like, no, keep going. It's all right, keep going. And I said, but they're not using it. He's like, they're using it. Walk around the class. So the first student, um, who we went to I hadn't said anything and he had within minutes of me sharing it on teams he had printed the notes and he was looking at it this I should actually clarify that this was a, a media lesson um and so they work on computers so he was look, referring to the notes and doing his work I hadn't had to say anything to any of the students they were just they knew the pattern this is what happens in class then he said okay keep walking around and I I noticed that they were all using it but in their own way mm. whether it could be on the screen or on their phone or if they printed it out but they were just doing their work and I was like oh my goodness it actually works I was so happy I wanted to well you know, like just wanted to do a happy dance but obviously I was working so I didn't um but yeah so that's kind of how it started in the classroom I made some revision notes because I wanted to, them to encourage my students to revise because not a lot of them would revise for their exams mm -hmm. and the the exciting thing about the sketch notes were that I later found that they were being shared. They were being shared by other tutors. Um, it 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 gave opportunity for me to talk about my work. And actually, one of the key things was 
although I made the sketch notes for the students, I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just, it was an experiment. And I asked them for feedback. And this, the feedback from the students was invaluable because that's how I improved it. Like, mm -hmm. for example, one of the parameters that I set for myself, which was limit the information to one page, didn't necessarily work for the students because it was actually too much information really on one page hmm. yeah so i so with each sketch note i made i would make changes because they were giving me constant feedback and then tutors gave me valuable feedback about um for example i because my handwriting is terrible i i used to write in capitals because that's my way of writing neatly and one of the dyslexia specialist tutors said well actually that's really hard for someone to read mm. um, if they have dyslexia because they're they're um it's the shape of the letters that helps them to differentiate the words so then I tried well had to kind of retrain my brain to write in lowercase as well so it was just really useful to share the sketch notes as a way to improve but also, um, yeah, to share my skills. But Mike, I have to say, you did influence me a lot in that because I attended the um, the sketch note workshop or no, the sketch note camp that was held online mm -hmm. in 2021, mm -hmm. and your keynote speech was about um, care and service and community. And um, how we as sketch noters, because we are a global community of sketch noters, can um, do good um, to our organizations that we work for or our, our, our communities. Like, how can we? We are in a very specific situation in the pandemic and it's affecting all of us in different ways. How can we use those skills to benefit others? So, that was what encouraged me actually, mm -hmm. because up to that point I was doing it for myself but then I thought well actually there are a community of people who are doing this and I'm going to do it in my workplace and I'm going to share it I'm not online but I'm going to share it in the in the space where I work and I hope that it will benefit other people but really the driving force for me to share sketch notes is that I was really desperate when I found it and I was thinking somebody else might be in that similar situation, and I hope it helps them. Hmm. It's really funny because that's my origin story. I was desperate as well. The way I was taking notes was just so frustrating. And I I forced myself like you to, to limit to a small notebook and switch from pencil to pen. And the experiment that I first did really set me on the path to say, hey, this is working for me. I really enjoy this. I can't wait to the next workshop or event that I can go try this and experiment with. So very much similar in that way. Um, and hoping, you know, if this is working for me, there has to be somebody else who this will help. Um, and then also, you know, sharing it with other people and getting feedback was a similar experience. It sounds like yours is even more, I guess, accelerated because, um, you know, you, you sort of, <laughs> you didn't have a lot of time, you know, you just had to keep working and then taking feedback live and then incorporating it as you worked, which is probably good for you, right? You almost got into a mode, it seemed to me like, where um, you were just doing the work, you're getting feedback, you're making modifications. And next thing you know, you're writing upper and lower case, you're modifying the structure and you're serving. Like, it seems to me like you're someone who, if you're serving someone else, you're willing to kind of go through you know, jump through hoops and go over fire and and do these things because you know it's going to help your students, right? In some ways, doing it for yourself, you sort of run into a point where like, ah, eh, I don't feel like doing it anymore. Who's there to hold you accountable? But you found an accountability group, which were your students who actually gave you the feedback and held you accountable and pushed you further to really accelerate your learning. And also it ultimately benefited them, right? Because your sketch notes started to align for what their needs were would that is that a fair way to think of that i would think so i think my the desperation i felt at the beginning was something for a long time that i actually tried to forget and i remember telling my boss this and she said something well 
to me, which was quite profound. She said, um, you know, it it's giving you more empathy for your students and that is exactly it. So um, I've always loved learning, but I've never struggled to the extent that I struggled at that time. Mm. But I'm really glad for that experience now because I share that with the students. I tell them I struggle, but when you struggle, you always have a choice. You know, there you can find another way. You don't need to give up. There are, it, it just... It's kind of like if you see it as an opportunity to do it a different way. Basically, that is what I learned. And that mm-hmm. is one of the reasons why I am so passionate about this, because I'm so lucky I stumbled across it. It was actually um, when I read a book about the Memory Palace, it was a free book on Apple Books. Mm-hmm. And then I found another free book about sketch notes. And it was um, it was basically a compilation created by educators Mm. and they were talking about the benefits of sketch notes and they shared examples of theirs and that's where I heard about your mini workshop which was on YouTube Mm -hmm. so I watched the video and then I was like that is actually when I bought the book because I was like I need to do this Mm -hmm. this is it so I have to say thank you to those people for for putting that out there because I would never have found it. Mm. But one of the other reasons why I was, one of the other reasons why I was confident that it would work with my students was your episode where you interviewed Laura Kazan, I think you pronounced her name? Mm. Yes, 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 yes. That episode, actually, I, I have listened to every episode of your podcast. I oh, just wow. tell you that. But that, and the reason being, I wanted to learn as much as possible um, from your interviews with different people of how and how they've used it. But her interview really stood out for me because I thought those are my students. Mm -hmm. Those are my students. And I think they will benefit from this. And, you know, one of the things she said at the end of her um, interview was that is your, she, in her three tips, she said, is your school special educational department willing to support sketch noting? I That is a department that I work for in my mm-hmm. college. So that is what gave me the confidence to share it with my team because, you know, it made such a difference to her son. And I thought, well, it might just help our students as well. So your podcast helped me a lot because there was something that I was doing by myself, but in listening to your interviews with other podcasters or other um, sketch noters, I kind of felt like I wasn't by myself in doing mm-hmm. this. I was so mm-hmm. encouraged. So thank you. Oh, that's really great to hear. That's, you know, um, often doing podcasts can be a lonely business because you do these interviews and of course they're enjoyable in the moment and you publish. And there's often not a ton of feedback that I receive back from the episodes but I keep doing them because I enjoy it. I think that's the driving force. And I know that there's people, and I know that because I hear like you and others who will say, yeah, I've listened to all the episodes. I can't wait for another one to come out. So I know there's fans out there, which is, you know, really exciting and helpful. And especially when I hear it in the context of your, I would call your, uh, your experience a journey, right? You sort of definitely went on this journey where you kept on discovering something else and that led you to something else. And that led you to something else. And, you continue to follow the thread all the way to, you know, kind of where you're at now, which is really cool because I think so many, you know, with the internet, especially um, stumbling onto something will lead this can lead to something else. If you allow it to, if you're curious and you follow that path. So I think that's a good reminder for us that um, sometimes it's just being open to something uh, and taking it one step further might lead to something that you could never have, have expected, which your story, your origin story here sounds exactly like that, um, that sort of string. And you just kept pulling the string and now here you are. Yeah, and actually one of the other reasons why I'm excited is for quite a few years now, I have been looking for a passion. You know, you know, my background is fashion design. I like to sew, I like to draw, mm-hmm. but And I love education, but I was looking for something that I would be really passionate about. And this is definitely it. So, yeah, Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, this 
I love I love your origin story. Thank you for sharing all the detail and giving us insights into sort of where those pivot points were. Um, I would love to hear, is there a project of any kind, maybe that you're beginning that you're excited about that you'd love to share with us? Um, I guess I would say is it's I've I've had more opportunities to share um sketch notes with my colleagues mm-hmm. and I I've been in training staff on how to sketch note and for me someone who I said is kind of a, you know an introvert and yeah. finds it really hard to talk to people this is like a watershed moment and it, mm-hmm. I don't have to say the sketch the sharing of sketch notes has just helped me develop more confidence in myself. So yeah, that's something. And um, this year in particular, the college that I work for, um, the focus is on inclusion. So um, as I as I started to share my sketch notes, we had a last year we had a guest speaker, uh, and he he's an in- inclusion expert. Mm-hmm. And I decided long before. The event I am definitely going to sketch note this only I didn't want to tell anyone because I didn't want to put pressure on myself so mm-hmm. I sat at the back and I made some sketch notes worked on it over the summer and then my goal was I'm going to share it with my colleagues um, because I want to tell more people but I wanted to sketch note something that we had all attended mm. so that it would be more meaningful and the exciting thing is this has led to more opportunities um, to sketch note Um, for different departments. I've done collaborations with colleagues um, who are specialists in different fields and we've combined our skills to train other staff. So yeah, um, it's just, it's such a, it's such a fun thing to do, but it's, it's a really useful way to communicate things that might be quite difficult to communicate in words, basically. It's Mm -hmm. very engaging and I'm excited that I did it and that it's being shared. Mm. That's really great. The your I love your approach of doing something that would be meaningful to the entire group so they could benefit from it. That's a really great way of layering two things. You're passionate about sketch noting and also about this this opportunity to learn and then making that as a service to your colleagues, right? Because I, I'm sure that yeah. they're seeing how this is having an impact on students and how it's helping them to learn and retain. So they definitely see the benefit. And now that's now opened up even the opportunity to teach them uh, these concepts so they could start to think like, well, how could I use it in my curriculum for my students uh, in an interesting way, which is you're just becoming this real true advocate (laughs) inside your college, which is pretty cool. But I I think also part of it was um, in terms of, I, I would say, when someone's sketch noting, I know this is actually a tip, but I'll I'll just say it in advance, is feed your mind. Because um, when I was doing this quietly, I was reading a lot of books about innovation and sketch notes and various things. There was a book called, oh, have I written it down somewhere? Um, I have it here. Oh, right. The, the book is called Creative Confidence, Unleash mm. the Creative Potential within all of us by Tom Kelly and David Kelly. Mm -hmm. That book was pivotal for me as well, because um, they they have an organization called IDEO. I don't know if you've heard of it before. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, IDEO is uh, is responsible for uh, promoting innovation, I guess is how how to put Mm -hmm. it. And, um, but taking a multidisciplinary approach. And that is, what has encouraged me to collaborate with my colleagues because when we think about organizations and how we can benefit our organizations when we work together and share our different skills that um, we bring different perspectives as well that is powerful Mm -hmm. so that is one of the reasons why I'm sharing it with my colleagues because although the sketch notes sketch noting is my skill I'm learning so much from them and I hope they're learning from me as well. Hmm. I'm I'm guessing, just judging by the little bit that I feel here, they're probably learning a lot from you, um, which is great. I think that's uh, so admirable for you to, you know, not keep it to yourself, but spread it further and offer it to, you know, 
to your colleagues, which is great to hear. Well, let's shift. Gonna, the, go ahead. I was going to say, I was going to attribute that to you too, because you have created a community of sharing. That is, for me, like one of the the things that drew me to Sketchnotes because it's such a friendly environment and people are very encouraging of one another. Definitely. So, yeah. Definitely something that um, I saw in other communities that I was involved with in the web design community. There was... Uh, a very welcoming and open uh, environment there. And I just wanted to model that. So it seems to me like because we modeled that early, that it drew other like-minded people and we seem to have built uh, a community that's sort of uh, sharing and open and helping each other all the way down. So when new people come, the culture is just, hey, this is a space where we share and we teach each other and we help each other. And, you know, I always say, there's so much opportunity to share this idea. <laughs> there's no reason why we should be f thinking that we're fighting over table scraps when there's so much opportunity for everyone to have a place at the table and do work and have an impact. There's just so much work to do. So I'm glad that uh, you've sensed that. It's definitely something intentional. Uh, and I hope that it just continues throughout the community. So that's really great to hear. Thank you. This episode of the Sketchnote Army podcast is brought to you by Concepts, a perfect tool for sketchnoting, available on iOS, Windows, and Android. Concepts Infinite Canvas lets you sketchnote in a defined area while still enjoying infinite space around it to write a quick note, scribble an idea, or keep pre-drawn visual elements handy for when you need them most. The Infinite Canvas lets you stretch out and work without worrying if you'll run out of space. And when combined with powerful vector drawing that offers high resolution output and complete brush and stroke control, you have a tool that's perfect for sketchnoting. Search Concepts in your favorite app store to give it a try. Uh, at this point, I would love to shift to something more practical, I guess. Not that the other stuff isn't practical, but... Um, we are, uh, the people on the podcast love hearing about tools and how people use their tools. So let's shift into the tool discussion and let's shift in specifically to analog tools and then follow up if you use digital tools with uh, what digital tools you use. Okay. I would say use what you have. Start with what you have. Um, for example, um, well, I, I used to use A4 sheets of paper because I sometimes destroy my work if it's not very good. <laughs> but actually, yeah, yeah, I have a habit of that. But I started with A4 sheets of paper and pen because although it was an erasable pen, you know, the Frix, Frixion mm -hmm, erasable mm -hmm. black right. pen, which um, is kind of the best of both worlds. I always think of a pen as the tool that makes me fearless mm. and the pencil that makes me cautious. Mm. But the friction pen is a pen, but I can rub it out. So I, I'm kind of contradicting myself anyway. Mm. But I, I started with that one because if I'm in the class and I, I, I'm sketchnoting, sometimes I make spelling errors and that helps me to fix it really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but lately, actually, I, I haven't used that as much. So maybe my confidence has grown. I just, um, so I like to use... Muji, have you heard of Muji pens? Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. It's a famous Japanese store, which I've been to the one in New York City, but I know it's worldwide as well. I love Muji. So uh, the the 0.38 and the 0.5, my absolute favorites. And then one of my colleagues in, uh, introduced me to the Papermate Inkjoy gel pen. Uh, have yes, you heard yeah. of that one? Those are good as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That one's amazing. And actually just recently stumbled across I didn't realize that you could get gray highlighter pens so I use the Stabilo Boss highlighter in mm -hmm. gray because well I was using the Tombow markers but they're quite expensive mm -hmm. so I kind of buy I like to buy a box of the Stabilo Boss they're really good um but paper wise I highly recommend dot grid paper mm -hmm. because it makes my my work look neat. Um, you know, some people say, oh, Moshi, how do you do such straight lines? Or, you know, that's so neat. I'm like, <laughs> if you zoom in, you will see the dots. It really helps a lot. Hmm. And 
in the classroom, I use a clipboard, which is quite handy. But also, if I'm doing a finished sketch note by hand, I use a transparent clipboard. That's a little tip. So if you if you use a transparent clipboard and then use one of the, you know, the flat LED light boxes, you can trace your work. So ah. it's just really handy. Interesting. So you have the light source behind this clear clipboard and then the, you can lay one, the rough sketch underneath and then do your finished on yeah. top of it. Is that, am I understanding that right? Yeah. Yeah. And those, those things are very cheap to buy, mm. but perfect for what I need. The dot grid paper that I absolutely love is Claire Fontaine paper. Mm. It mm. just feels really, really nice. Mm. It works well with those pens that you've mentioned. And a question, you know, uh, for those who are dot grid connoisseurs, um, I know mm. that there's different uh, levels of dot grid. Like um, I know some have very light gray uh, dot, uh -huh. dots, right? And some are darker. So where does the Claire Fontaine fall on that spectrum? Is it relatively light dots so that it's, you know, kind of goes invisible uh, at some point or are they a little bit darker? I think it's kind of light because it's okay. not, because people don't really notice it. And I, I kind of feel like I'm cheating because I'm thinking <laughs> they think I'm really neat, but I'm not. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, and I guess too, um, I suppose if you're using that, the, the Stabilo Boss gray marker, um, it would be, I guess you could adjust your exposure, say in Photoshop or whatever your photo tool is, you know, and increase the contrast. Um, yeah. Those dots would probably drop away and you wouldn't even see them. Right. So that's, that's probably another option as well. Oh, actually another tip. Um, so I find when I was sketch noting in the classroom, I was taking too long with um, creating the, preparing the page in advance. So what I, I did was I had a template and mm. which was the, the original was dot grid paper. And because I'm in the classroom, I just you I just photocopied that page. And so the dot grid was even less noticeable. So when I scanned mm. it, nobody knew. So yeah, that's another ah, interesting. Another Sneaky. little tip. Cool. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. We're getting we're getting free tips here. This is pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> um now does the Clairefontaine uh, paper come in like a block and then you tear off sheets as needed, or is it bound in some way? Well, how is that how is that uh, paper? How do you work with the paper? It is, yeah, you, you tear, it's it's in a block and then you tear it off. Mm. It's They say it comes in A4 and A5. Mm -hmm. um, that's, I think that's the European size. But mm -hmm. when you tear it off, it's slightly smaller. Oh, I see. But because there's honestly, perforations on the edge, probably. Yeah. But I, I think they provide the paper for Rodia notebooks. Is it Rodia? Yes, yes, exactly. Rodia? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think they have that same paper, but I like yeah. to, I like, basically I like loose sheets because I can mm. then arrange it in whichever way I want. I see. So, and it's much easier to scan your work if it's not mm -hmm. in a notebook. Mm, good point. Yeah. And I think if, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think Claire Fontaine and Rodi are both French companies. So it makes sense that they would collaborate yeah. in some way. Maybe they're owned by the same parent company for all I know. I don't know, but um, I think Rodi, notebooks work in a similar way where there's a and maybe they calculate this right so actually the part you tear off is maybe a4 and they add a little bit so when you you know the perforation tears away and what's left in the notebook is a little bit taller than a4 so you know what i mean like when you tear out the sheet it's exactly a4 i don't know if that's true but i've used rhodia no, it's paper smaller before. is it okay so it is it is it's annoying perfect. that it's smaller <laughs> but I, I still like the paper it's still like the paper, but it's smaller. Got it. Okay. Good to know. Good to know for those who are uh, find that important. A uh, little tip again there. Um, what about digital? Uh, do you have uh, digital tools that you use? Are you using an iPad or some other tool like that? I started using the iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil. Mm -hmm. And that was that the first sketch note I did with that was the one of the guest speaker because okay. I just wanted to take the sketch notes to a more in my in my view professional level mm -hmm. and to kind of like because when I was having to trace it you know for a finished sketch note I wanted to kind of take away some of the those steps and do more of a rough sketch and then do the the illustration I use concepts. Oh okay. my goodness, concepts yeah. is so Great good. Tool. 
yeah and procreate obviously yeah everyone uses it but i i have to admit i don't know how to use both of them really really well Mm -hmm. but i use them enough to get my um the the finish that i would like that's something to explore later Mm -hmm. but i have to admit i prefer work working on paper i just love the feel of paper Mm -hmm. yeah that's that's my go-to yeah i think um many sketch noters will use like a a paper like or some other similar matte um screen protector which sort of approximates the feel of paper i mean it's not exactly i think paper like probably achieves it the best with the cl- best clarity but there are other screen protectors that also do that the same right um which helps right but yeah. still it's not quite ink on paper it's closer so it's it's good but i have to say by going on the ipad it makes me more of a perfectionist and i don't mm-hmm. like that mm-hmm. because um at least when I sketch it in the classroom, it feels hot off the press and I haven't had a chance to make it beautiful because mm-hmm. my objective is to make meaningful notes that are useful. So it, I think when I do the, my digital sketch notes, I'm thinking too much about aesthetics. I'm trying to break mm-hmm. away from doing that because it's very tempting. Yeah, it's almost as though paper and pen puts emphasis on the process because mm-hmm. you have less control. Whereas when you go to an iPad or something, you end up inadvertently being fo- maybe even more focused, a little bit more focused on the output, right? Because you have the ability to undo or to redo things or to change things or to move things, right? Um, endlessly, if you <laughs> if you allowed yourself to, and there's something about the paper that, you know, maybe the friction of the paper in the sense of um, if you do it hot off the press, right? And even if you redid it, let's say you wanted to do it a little nicer, like it, there's some friction there, right? You've got to redraw all this stuff on another sheet on your clear clipboard with the light coming from behind. And it's a little bit of friction. You wouldn't want to do it a third time, right? So you would probably no. stop at that point where with the iPad, it's very easy to just keep noodling and noodling and noodling and never finish. So I could see the the definite um, different feel for them. And they, you know, I always think of the two have sort of provide different purposes. So I often use uh, the iPad for illustrations where, you know, it's going to be printed or there's, there is some final output that's important. But um, I found this recently on a project um, just to point out this. I was doing the iPad um, with, I use paper and I was doing sketches and I had sort of built a little template for myself for this illustration project. And I found myself getting really rigid and I was resisting drawing and I was taking longer on each piece. And it was just, uh, I got to the point where I said, wait a minute, I need to just change this up. So I got the manuscript for the book project that I'm working on. And I just got my little pen and all I could fit were in the margins, little thumbnails along the edge of where the text was, right? So it was very limited space. So I just started doing these little thumbnails and started drawing concept and it was amazing how much it freed me up to just think, oh, a little thumbnail, big deal. You know, that one didn't work. Draw another one. Oh, that didn't work. Draw another one. Well, I like that. What if yeah. I do another one, right? So next thing you know, every one of these ideas I was having to illustrate for, um, you know, I was doing three or four different concepts or little variations, right? And suddenly the floodgates opened and I was just like moving through the manuscript like crazy. And all it was was this shift from, you know, sort of the rigidity or the perfectionism or something on the iPad back to paper and a pen with limited space. Like again, coming back to limitations and embracing them just keeps proving itself as a really effective tool for freeing, at least for me, freeing my mind to kind of focus on the content and really get into the process and stop worrying so much about the output. So I definitely can resonate with kind of what you're saying here. I agree. Mm. I, I also would say that I find that as I've, uh, I hope I go back to how I was before. As I when I started sketch noting and I didn't have anything to go by any previous sketch notes, basically, um, I all I thought was I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. And now that I've been doing it, I'm starting to be more cautious. I'm like, mm. what's happening? Because I'm because I'm I'm almost scared to do it because mm-hmm. I feel that I have. People expect it to be good. Yeah. What if it's not good? Yeah. 
Yeah, that's so I just really need to just do it. And I think, you know, if you actually it would be interesting for you to actually ask someone to do some, you know, user testing and ask them, uh, what do you expect out of it? And you probably would find that they would think like, whatever you're doing is amazing. Like they wouldn't care either way, right? Like they just love that you are thinking this way, right? If you get to the core of it. And I mean, the beauty of it is um, we often sort of find ourselves like I, the story I told you about the illustration. I sort of boxed myself into this situation and um, it finally dawned on me like, wait a minute, I'm in charge of this project. Like, why am I feeling as though I have to follow some rigid template that I made? Like, I can change anytime I want to, right? I'm just going to grab the manuscript and a pen and forget the iPad. I'm not touching the iPad, right? Like we have the opportunity to have, um, you know, the ability to make those changes and to try and experiment and sort of work our way back. So that's really good news that if you ever find yourself bound in or you've painted yourself in a corner, well, you know, your shoes might get some paint on them, but you can walk out of the corner and just start over again. So that's always good news is, you have the opportunity to shake it up and try some new things or go back to the, you know, go back to the thing that worked for you and, you know, start again and see what, what did I learn from the other one and how can I apply this now knowing it, which is sounds like a little yeah. bit of where you're, you're at as well. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I, I would say what, what of my daily practices um, for sketch notes is that um, I sketch note um, sermons online. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a church that does like a daily devotional, uh, which is like 15 minutes long. Mm -hmm. So I don't do it first thing in the morning because I'm not a morning person. <laughs> I do it later on in the evening. But I find that those sketch notes are more real mm -hmm. because nobody sees them except me. Yeah. And I have actually, I've, I've moved from single sheets of paper to a notebook for that. So I have a whole notebook full of them. And what I like about them is they are just themselves. I have not tried to make anything beautiful. I just quickly mm. got that information down. So yeah, try and even if you go digital, keep drawing by hand. Mm. Maybe that's your first tip since we're now sort of heading into the tips department. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and I guess I should frame it. I always frame this. Probably regular listeners like you will have heard this a million times. But, you know, give us three tips that you would say to someone who feels stuck, someone who feels they're on a plateau, just needs a little inspiration to kind of break out of maybe a rut. Um, and I think if you want to go further in this, what you've talked about, you know, go back to drawing by hand. This could be your first tip, I think. Okay, I have many tips. And I it's hard to whittle it down to three, so I might give a few more, is that all right? That's fine, yeah, please. Um, okay, first one is don't overthink it. Just mm -hmm. do it. Just do it. Um, I try to talk myself out of it when I was doing it at work, but I have to say, when I did it, what a sigh of relief. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed myself, even though I was getting paid for it. I was like, wow, this is fun. So just do it. That's the first tip. Okay. Um, if you can't do something, don't worry. Find another way. Be open to trying something different. And if you're struggling with your sketch note, listen to the podcast. Listen to the different interviews with different um, sketch noters. Find out how they're using it. Especially make note of their tips. What are they doing? That, and just try it. Next one is share your work. And it, I mean, it doesn't, like I am not online at present, but I will be. Um, so share it at work, share it with friends, or even just um, sketch note in a diary or something. But yeah, share it with other people. Experiment, especially with the... Uh, the layout of the sketch note, find what works for you. Actually, this is way more than three. I'm going to give you a few more. Okay, go for Collaborate it. Collaborate with your colleagues. That is golden. Mm. Collaborate with your colleagues because then you get to make really meaningful um, connections with your colleagues. That, mm -hmm. Like I, I'm now working with people that I wouldn't have an opportunity to work with or we our paths may not have crossed, but um, sketch notes has kind of opened the door for that. So 
collaborate. Um, ask for feedback, another golden one, because mm-hmm. that is how you're going to improve. Because if I had sketch noted and sketch noted and sketch noted and nobody saw it, how could I improve? I might have improved, but maybe a lot slower. So definitely ask for feedback and tell someone your goal. If this is something that you want to start doing, share that with someone because what really helped me, what was so pivotal was that teacher. Um, he encouraged me because, you know, my very first sketch note, I have it in the classroom that I did. It, it, it's not wonderful. And he just, I, I thought he was going to laugh, but he just encouraged me. And um, that kind of helped me to be accountable because I've told people, this is so- something that I want to do. So be intentional and tell people about it. You're more likely, if it's a, like, a New Year's resolution say you're more likely to keep it if you've told people you're going to do it Mm. so yeah Um, I'll give you a bonus tip don't give up be patient be patient because when you sketch note say for example at work people may not understand what you're doing at first they might think it's a bit strange they might wonder why you're doing it they might actually tell you to stop doing it Nobody told me to stop doing it, but just say somebody might. Don't let that determine whether you do it or not. Keep Mm. going. Do not get discouraged. Just do it. Mm. Well, those are fantastic tips. I'm glad that you uh, added some additional ones because um, it seems to me like this is a a great series of tips that you've shared with us and directly from your own experience, right? We, I can tie them all back to the story you told of how you began sketchnoting at work and you know, with the, your students in mind. And next thing you know, you're collaborating with colleagues and sharing information with them and having an influence, right? You're, you're this one little, one little experiment led to influencing your whole college, it seems like, and probably leading in that direction, which is pretty cool. Um, so thank you so much for the tips and, and offering them to us. Thank you. So this is the part where we typically ask uh, where we can find you. And as we chatted just before we began recording, you're in the middle of um, developing probably a website and and working out social media stuff. So um, yeah. if you don't if you don't have anything yet, um, that's okay. And we will put that in the show notes if it's available when we come to this. Um, yeah. So maybe uh, maybe the. In, in lieu of doing that, since we'll just do that in the show notes, if you're listening, just peek in the show notes. And if uh, if uh, Maushi's got some information, we'll put it in there for you so you can find her. Um, I just want to let you know that I'm so impressed with your story and how you've uh, just moved yourself forward. You, you know, you, with a servant attitude, serving your students and how this led you to where you're going and you continue to serve. I think you just a real, really great example of our community. You really represent our community. And I'm really proud to have you as a representative where you are. And uh, so encouraged by your story. Thank you so much for taking time and spending time to share it with us. And I'm, I'm so excited to hear how this will influence the next person who hears it and all the influences you're going to have in your in the place where you are. So thank you so much, Mashi. Can I say a big thank you to you? You have encouraged me so much. You didn't know that I was listening to all of your episodes. You didn't know that I attended your workshop online. Um, You know, when I went to the Sketchnote camp um, that was online, you know, you could only see my illustration. I I wasn't visible. Mm -hmm. You know, I did all those things quietly. And, you know, you and your community has encouraged me so much, even when I was doing this by myself. So thank you so much. Well, thank you. I'm it's forever a, grateful. Well, it's an honor. It's an honor to serve. So thank you. Sounds like we uh, we were in a good place and um, we continue to have our influence. So sometimes it doesn't seem like you are, but you are having an influence. So keep going, just as Maushi said in her tips, right? Keep going. Well, this has been so much fun. It's been so enjoyable to talk with you and hear your stories. And I'm just excited to see where this all goes for you and how you're going to fit into our community. Um, for everyone who's listening to the podcast, this wraps another episode of the Sketch and Memory Podcast. So until the next episode, this is Mike and Maushi signing off for today. Talk to you soon. The Sketch Note Army Podcast was created by me, Mike Rody, and brought to you by Rody Design Studios. 
It's produced and edited by Alec Polianis of Amp Creative Studios. The theme music was created by John Schiedemeyer. To support the creation of this show, I invite you to buy one of my books, The Sketchnote Handbook or The Sketchnote Workbook. You can find the books on Amazon or go to peachpit.com and use the code RODI40 for 40% off. Please share this podcast with other visual thinking friends and be sure to leave a nice rating on iTunes or your favorite podcast listening app so others can find the show. 